Good morning, buenos dias. Those are the only two languages I know how to say that. <laughs> I'm a little tired, a little slow this morning. It's uh, a bit before dawn. I am just basically gonna record my whole birding experience just firsthand. I don't have my GoPro or my drone, so I'm not gonna do a lot of fancy bee footage, but I just wanna give you guys like a vlog experience, a firsthand experience of what birding is really like, and I'm gonna do my best to get every single bird on my Nikon. Hopefully we see some cool stuff, so let's get to it. So I'm at my destination, and I do not get here till about half an hour after sunrise, which is not good. You do not want to be late when you are birding, especially if you're in a place where it gets really hot, because right now we're in late May in Florida. It's starting to get really hot during the day. I'm hearing a whole lot of good stuff, some woodpeckers, uh, there's some mockingbirds, and here's some better looks at some fish crows right here in the parking lot. So the peak for the warbler migration uh, in this area of Florida was a few weeks ago. There's actually sort of a fallout, which is pretty awesome. I should have made this video then. Anyway, I'm not going to see nearly as much as I did then. However, I am very curious to see if there's any migratory warbler still lingering around. <laughs> here but yeah there's cardinals lots of gnat catchers i am hearing northern parallels but they are far off in the distance but one thing that i do love about coming to this exact place is i often see gopher tortoises i don't think they're out right now i think they're tucked into their burrows saw a northern parallel which is a beautiful little warbler that actually breeds here and then there's also a female American red star that was just in the middle of all this junk up here but I couldn't get my camera on it there was also an anhinga that flew over my head flew right oh what is this oh, I think this is the American red star so that was an American red star yeah this is definitely pretty challenging getting all the birds I see on video especially here in this type of habitat in the forest. Anyway, I'm gonna go get in the car and drive south because there's really not that much going on here. So I just decided to pull over right here, side of this miniature highway, because there's a whole bunch of black vultures. They're probably feasting on something up here. You can see them at my point and shoot right up here. See, they're all up there. These guys are really letting me get close. Black vultures are basically like pests around Florida. So who really cares, but I don't know. It's cool to get pretty up close, get some video footage. And then right across the highway here, there's also a red-shouldered hawk, which is definitely the most common hawk around here in Florida. Pulled over again, there's another red-shouldered hawk. I have a feeling I might see a million red-shouldered hawks today, but uh, gonna try to get some better footage of this guy for you guys. There's also an Eastern Phoebe calling, which I'm gonna venture that way, try to see that guy. Never mind, I think that's a mockingbird imitating an Eastern Phoebe. All right, so I just pulled over. Um, I saw a sandhill crane up here, so 
these sandhill cranes are letting me get pretty close. There's four of them right here. What we have here is a family of sandhill cranes. There's two adults and two juveniles. It could be mom and dad and their children. Just pulled into this preserve and I am going to just bird from the car. This is what you call safari birding where you drive slowly and you listen to what's going on. Maybe you, know, you can stop and get out, try to find whatever you hear, or you know, you just watch birds and photograph them from the car. The thing that's nice about birding from the car is that a lot of times you can actually get closer to birds when you're in the car. So, and so I have an Eastern meadow lark. He's on top of a bush on the other side of this clearing. And then on the other side, I have sort of this pine woodland palmetto stuff. I just saw a family of turkeys. All right, a couple of cattle egrets just flew by. I decided to pull over. I'm hearing morning doves, which I guess I've seen a lot of those driving on the road so far today. I'm hearing Carolina wrens, cardinals. One thing about birding is that once you become more experienced and learn all the sounds, most of the birds that you detect, you're only gonna detect by sound. In my case, I would say that over 90% of the birds that I detect, I only detect by sound. I don't even see them. So once you learn the sounds of the birds, that really changes the experience so much. I'm going to try to find a common yellow throat. A common yellow throat is singing in here. You can hear him. When you're walking in these areas, you really want to watch out for snakes. There's pygmy rattlers. I'm watching out for snakes, not just because I don't want to step on one, but I would also love to find one. I just saw another American red start deep into the leaves in there. There's also also heard downy woodpecker. Um, I heard a pileated woodpecker in the distance, red-bellied woodpecker in the distance. Check this out. I know nothing about dung beetles, but that's pretty darn cool. More downy woodpeckers. I heard a great crested flycatcher. Tons of jays around cardinals. Again, I'm hearing all this stuff, I'm not seeing it. And I feel like that's kind of the problem with making a birding vlog, is that it's kind of hard to get good video of everything, even good photos of everything when you're out in the field of everything that you see. I mean, I feel like most of this video so far is me just telling you what I've seen. So there are definitely some American crows up here. Most places in the country, who really cares about American crows? But in at least this area of Florida, fish crows are pretty much everywhere. And there's not that many American crows. You really have to start going further inland. But anyways, I'm gonna keep moving. All right, stopped the car again. And the reason why I stopped the car was because it looks like there is an egret out there. Ridiculous that I even walked like 50 yards away from the car to see a great egret because great egrets, just like so many other big water birds in Florida, are just everywhere. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I just stopped the car. So, I'm actually going to get out here because I have actually realized that there are savannah sparrows calling. I don't think they're gonna show themselves, but I'm gonna walk up here on this berm and see what we can do. So that's pretty cool. So I show up here looking for the savannah sparrow and then I started taking a closer look at the little blue heron and then uh, this common gallinule, a mother common gallinule with three chicks. That is pretty cool. It's not every day you get to see a common gallinule with some chicks. That bald 
bald eagle was pretty darn cool. You know, the bald eagle has some sentimental value for me because I'm an American. It's our national bird here in the United States of America. Also, some of my friends call me the bald eagle. So that's some extra sentimental value for me. All right, well, I just went into there because uh, I heard another great crested flycatcher and I got some footage of it, uh, completely backlit, not good footage. I also saw a black pole warbler. Again, I couldn't get good video of it, maybe barely a little bit of its tail. So anyway, it's getting hot. Um, I'm gonna head back to my neighborhood. On the way, I should, I, I should see some more birds, lots of ospreys, lots of pelicans. You know, ospreys down here are like pests. Get ready to see like 52 million. All right, so now I am driving along the intercoastal and there's an osprey nest like pretty much every 100 yards. Look, there's one right there. 